Welcome to this video lesson where I will be continuing with the concept of Archimedes principle. In this physics lesson, we are going to look at the application of the concept of up thrust. That is the application of Archimedes principle. In our last lesson, we covered the concept of the up thrust to greater depth. So if you have not watched my previous video, please do so because we covered this concept to a great extent. In this lesson, we are going to look at the applications and this will come in form of a question. At this point, you may find it useful to pause the video and try out the question before I show you how it is worked out. So go right ahead and pause the video and do exactly that. Okay, welcome back. This is how the questions are worked out. So take a brief moment and mark your own work. After that, proceed with the rest of the video to see how I got these answers. In the question we are told that a small stone weighs 100 newtons in air and 80 newtons when immersed in water of density 1 gram per centimeter cubed. We are asked to determine the up thrust on the stone due to the water. You will remember that in our last lesson, we covered Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle states that when an object is wholly or partially immersed in a fluid, it will experience an up thrust which is equal to weight of water displaced. Weight of fluid displaced. Actually, it's supposed to be fluid. It's not just water. Water is an example of a fluid. Other examples include paraffin and so forth. Even gases are fluids. So when an object is wholly or partially immersed in a fluid, the up thrust which will act on it due to that fluid will be equal to the weight of the fluid which is displaced when the object is immersed. Now we can determine the up thrust on an object if we determine the weight of the object in air and then we subtract the weight in the fluid. In this case, it will be water. So in air, this object weighs 100 newtons. In water, it weighs 80 newtons. Rather, it appears to weigh 80 newtons. And therefore, the difference will be 20 newtons. And this will be equal to the up thrust. Now let's go ahead and calculate the weight of the water displaced. That is the weight of the fluid displaced. We simply need to go back to Archimedes principle. Up thrust is equal to weight of fluid displaced. So the weight of the water displaced, in this case water is the fluid in which the stone was immersed. The weight of that water which is displaced will be equal to the up thrust. And the up thrust we have seen is 20 newtons. From there we can determine the mass of water displaced. At this point we need to remember the relationship between mass and weight. Consider this. This is weight of water displaced. We want mass of water displaced. So, since weight of an object is equal to its mass times the gravitational field strength, then it implies that the mass will be equal to weight divided by the gravitational field strength. We have seen that the weight is 20 newtons. The value of the G on Earth can be assumed to be 10 newton per kilogram. We can have the newtons cancelling out here and that leaves us with 2 kilograms. This will be the mass of the water displaced. Next, we want to calculate the volume of the water displaced. We can use two methods. One of them is to use the fact that we know the density of water and we now know its mass. 
So if we know mass and density, we can work out volume by doing this. Volume is equal to mass over density. The mass of the water displaced is 2 kilograms. Density of water displaced is 1 gram per centimeter cubed and we know from elsewhere in our lessons that 1 gram per centimeter cubed is equal to 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. And of course the kilograms and the kilograms cancel out. Meters cubed now becomes the denominator. 2 of 1000 becomes equal to 0 0.002 meters cubed. This is the volume of the water displaced. From the volume of the water displaced, we can go ahead and deduce that the volume of the stone is the same as the volume of the water displaced. So the volume of the stone is equal to volume of water displaced, which is 0 0.002 meters cubed. We were able to see this from our previous lesson, where I asked you to use a measuring cylinder to determine the volume of an irregularly shaped stone. And the moment you obtain the volume of the water displaced, immediately you realize that it is equal to the volume of the stone which was immersed in it. Because the water gave space for the stone which has just come into it. So the volume of water which was displaced must be equal to the volume of the object which displaced that water. Next, we want to calculate the mass of the stone. This can be worked out by remembering that we've got the weight of the object in air. We've got the weight of the stone in air. So again, the relationship between mass and volume is such that mass is equal to the gravity the weight of the object, the weight of the object divided by the gravitational field strength. The weight of the object in air is 1000, rather 100 newtons. The value of G is 10 newton per kilogram. And this gives us the mass of the stone to be 10 kilograms. Notice that sometimes I'm putting units to the physical quantities which I'm substituting into the equations so that I can show you how they cancel out and the units which are left after similar or same units cancel out. For example, here kilograms canceled out with the kilograms, leaving me with the meters cubed. Over here, the newton and the newton have canceled out, leaving me with the kilogram. Notice that here I'm dividing the denominator by the kilogram. So that kilogram automatically becomes a numerator. A similar thing happens here. So this is the mass of the stone. And from the mass of the stone and the volume of the stone, I can get the density of the stone by doing this. Density is equal to mass over volume. The mass of the stone is 10 kilograms. Its volume is 0. 0, 0, 0.002 meters cubed and this will give us 10 times 1000 divided by 2 and that will give us 5000 kilograms per meters cubed. I had said that I would show you another method of calculating the volume of the water displaced here. Instead of using the equation volume is equal to mass over density, at, I could use this relationship here. Up thrust is equal to weight of water displaced. Weight of water displaced is equal to mass of water displaced times the G. Mass of water displaced is equal to density of the water times the volume of the water displaced times G. 
And this implies that the volume, this volume of water displaced is equal to up thrust divided by density times g. I have just made v to be the subject. I have divided both sides by rho g. Rho g. So to get this, volume is equal to up thrust over rho g. And we had worked out our up thrust to be 20 newtons. The density of the water displaced is 1000 times the g. And obviously that gives us a volume of 0 0.002 meters cubed the same as what we had got here 0 0.002 meters cubed and that is the end of this simple lesson what you can do is to try and repeat this question now without looking at the answers thank you for watching the video if you like the way i explain this concept please subscribe to this channel and invite your friends to do the same.